Hi there, everybody, and welcome to Soundsphere Magazine. Today we are uh, with the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Gary Newman. Uh, hi, hi, Gary. How are you doing? Welcome. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. I'm really good. Thank you. It's a bit cold here today, strangely enough, actually. I don't say that very often in Los Angeles, but no, it's good. Yeah, back in the UK, we've just got spring and started today, so uh, it's yeah. quite a nice, like, birds are singing, a bit of warmth, and I managed to get out into the sun for the first time in about a week. Yeah, that uh, must be well cut, I'd have thought. Probably last about a week and then, and then bang, it's probably gone. <laughs> um, yeah, the last, the last spring I was in, when I lived in England, the last spring uh, would be, what, 2012. And if I remember rightly, it rained every single day. I mean, not all day, but at some point in, in it rained in every single day of spring, the wettest spring on record. Oh, and man. then people were saying to me, why are you leaving? <laughs> and you went... <laughs> Uh. <laughs> I can't imagine. <laughs> yeah. You know. Yeah. Exactly. And what, what happened to me when I got to sort of fifty, uh, and I just uh, something something happened to me at fifty, mm. and I'm, I'm way past that now. But uh, the, I, I realised that you know that I, I've got less life left than I've already had, and that definitely messed me up a little bit. And I started to get really paranoid about trying to get as much out of my days as possible. Do as much, do as much work as you could, live life as much as you could. And I just found it frustrating, you know, by being indoors and, and having so much of your life, you know, ruined because of shitty weather. Yeah. You know, always, you know half the year got to have coats on and scarves and all that. You know, oh, man, I don't want this. And I've been to Los Angeles sort of more than enough times to know that it was the opposite of that. You know, you, mm. it's always t-shirts. Every, you, you eat outside. You know, every other house has got a swimming pool. Yeah, you know, it's, just, it's just a completely different sort of life. So it, it was it was pretty enticing, to be honest. Yeah, well, I mean that's that's quite a depressing thing uh, to say, but it's also <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that you, 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 it's inspirational. It's like one of those things where you think, oh God, right. Act now, you know. Don't don't be all miserable and mongy about it. Just yeah, know, yeah. Just I mean, what's that? You know, you, you you look at what's going on in your life, and you find something that's not right about it, and don't sit there and moan about it. Do something about it. You know, that's pretty much been the way I've lived my whole life. Really, mm. I'm not much of a moaner. You know, uh, I just I do a bit actually. <laughs> I suppose. <laughs> I think it's human nature you know, it's to moan a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> It's a requirement of a British passport, isn't it? To, <laughs> to moan a bit. It says on it, must moan. Yeah. Hewing, <laughs> moaning. <laughs> <laughs> so I do a bit, but you know, generally speaking, I, I just sort of get on with stuff. You know, mm, and if things mm. go badly, just get your head down and work through it, you know, come out the other end of it. And moving here was one of those things, really. Yeah. How do you think the situation of the past 12 months as inspired the new album? The album itself was already well underway. Mm. I probably had about two-thirds of it done before the pandemic hit. And so its its theme was already well established. I mean, there was even a thread running through it that talked about a virus, mm. you know, as part of the Earth, the earth fight. You know, the, album, the album is all about if the Earth could speak, what would it say? How does it feel about what's going on now, or has been going on for some time? You know, does it feel angry? Is it disillusioned, disappointed? Um, you know, does it feel betrayed by us? Does it want to fight back? That's the most important issue, I think. You know, does it want to fight back? Or is it already fighting back? Mm-hmm. And that's where the virus connection came into it, because in the songs that I was doing at the beginning, you know, this idea that the Earth might choose to fight back was sort of kind of being evolved. You know, how, how would it do that? And the virus is one of the ideas. So it was just bizarre, a bizarre coincidence for me to be that deep into an album that was talking about exactly that mm-hmm. when it happened. You know, so I, I, there is a song on the album called The Gift, which is about COVID specifically, mm. but, it, but it was kind of already there as this thread anyway, that you know, the, the Earth was fighting back and how would it go about it. So it's just weird, really. So in that sense, it, it had little impact on the record because it was already saying what he was going to say, which was relevant to that. Um, for me, I mean, you know, you go out to the studio in the morning, you're out there with day, you come back in in the night time, you know, you're either grumpy or not, depending on how well your day's gone, and you go to bed, you know, and all you're thinking about is the record, and you, you know, 
my wife says I get what she calls preoc for, for preoccupied because <laughs> I can't really talk about it. You know, I'm mm. just your, your head's in it, and yeah, you, you can be like that for a really, really long time. So I'm out there making a record, and the, and the pandemic comes along, and we all get told to stay indoors. Didn't change a thing for me. I was already staying indoors. Yeah, I was, I'm coming in late at night. We're not going out anywhere. You know, I go to bed thinking about the record, you know, which included a virus, strangely enough. The next morning I wake up and I go straight to the studio and that's my life for a while. So I, I honestly, I was aware of it, obviously. It's all over the news and, you know, the kids are home from school. So you, you know, there were noticeable things that were different. But in terms of me personally, it didn't really change that much. And then during that, I wrote a book. You know, I spent okay. a couple of months writing a book. Um, and so I, I didn't really get the full impact of it until July, August mm. last, last year when the album was finished. Um, and the, the, the family, the, the family, you know, my wife's got her dad is in a home here, there, sorry, in England. Um, mm. You know, the kids, my my. Dad is still alive. My kids want to go and visit him. So, and, and I think they just that they were really affected by it, and they were just desperate to get out and go somewhere. So we we came to Britain. We flew into Britain, did our quarantine, hung around in Britain for a few weeks. You know, because he was allowed to. Then it wasn't. It was going to get. It got a lot worse just after we left. Yeah. <laughs> strangely enough, um, and so that's when I really noticed just how different everything was. Because up until then, I've been in the studio day in day out. Mm. Getting, getting the record done. So, um, yeah, that was pretty shocking, though. Yeah. Uh, um, bit of a, an eye opening experience. But, uh, yeah, I, um, to be honest, I mean, I am, I am sick of it now, though. I, I, think, I think we all are. I think there's been um, a lot of creative people have found different creative outlets. Can, yeah. you, can you talk about the book? Is there anything that you can say about that? Oh no! So it's nothing special. It's just an autobiography that so came out in Oct in October. I, mm. I think just, okay. just me talking about me. Saying <laughs> <my whole thing. laughs> well, no, it's, it's the subject that's uh, you know your most close to my heart. Well versed in. Aren't you? No, so, I wasn't meant to do it actually. It was it was being ghost written, um, mm. and I was a bit uncomfortable about that. But I was so busy that I just thought there's no way I'm going to get the time you know, to, to do anything like that. And then mm -hmm. when I read the first draft of the, of the ghost written version, it was really well done, but it, it, it just wasn't me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, I, like I say, I've been a bit uncomfortable about that anyway. Um, and I just couldn't do it. So I'm, I'm sorry, you know, so forgive me, because I know you put all this work into it, but I can't, I can't. I can't I'm going to have to do it myself. And the, the, where it was awkward was, I was still finishing off the album. I had two more songs to do, and I had eight weeks. I had, there was an eight-week period before the album deadline was, was ready. So it had all gone really well. You know, eight weeks to do two songs. You know, that's just you could do a dozen in that time. You know, yeah. That is plenty of time. So I'm just sitting back, sort of thinking how well I'd managed time and it all going swimmingly. And then the book arrived, and, oh shit, you know, it's got to be done. And the deadline was almost the same. You know, it's, oh, what? <laughs> so I spent seven of those eight weeks doing the book. So now, then I go oh, back wow. to the album and business, but now I've got one week to do two songs. That's not so easy. You know, two and a half weeks yeah. because another one I hadn't, I hadn't finished. So it went from being this really laid back, well managed you know, mm -hmm. uh, project. To be in two really badly managed projects with no time, <laughs> you know. so it was all a little bit rushed. But it, it was good. It came out all right, actually. You know, it's 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 weird mm. you can, going back writing a book like that. It's a bit weird because you you do sort of relive a whole load of things that were difficult. Mm. You know, you know, my my career is doing okay now, but for a really long time it wasn't. But it was really a real struggle mm. and there was lots of setbacks and you know, huge sort of crushing disappointments and letdowns and betrayals, all, all sorts of things that go on. You know, we were trying to have a baby for a long time. We lost the baby. That was horribly traumatic. Yeah, my mum got, got cancer my, and died. You know, so all of these things are in there. So you go back and you kind of, you sort of remember, because I think a lot of the, a lot of times of life, you, you tend to, you know, the really bad things, I think they're the things that shape you, actually. Mm. I think 
I, I think we're shaped largely by how we handle disappointments and setbacks and, uh, rather than the good things. I think we tend to take good things in our stride and just absorb them. Yeah. But we're actually properly changed and shaped by, by bad things. And I think it's a measure of your character as to how well you, how you are shaped by those bad things, you know, whether you come mm. out of it good or as a good person or not. And so it's, inter- it's interesting to go back and, and relive all that. But, you know, it, it's uh, not massively enjoyable, no. really. You know, it's quite a, it's quite a journey. Yeah, do, you, do you have a different perspective on those things now? I, I, you know, those things are in the past and now you can sort of take that and look at it in hindsight? Well, you, you do. You do this, actually, yeah. But I, the, the thing that I noticed more by going back and writing about it it was actually a lot more difficult than I remember. Mm. I think when, you, when you're in it and you're sort of fighting and these things are going wrong and you're making these decisions to try to overcome that hurdle yeah. and that problem and that piece of shit that just dropped you in it, you know, get around him and... Do you know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's all of that. It's, when you're in it, mm. you're just sort of fighting and you're, and you're just trying to do the best you can. And so you're not, you're not sort of... You're not wallowing it. We shouldn't anyway. I mean, I yeah. wasn't. You don't... Know? You're wallowing these things doesn't do any good at all. You've just got to find a way through them or over them. Mm-hmm. Um, so reading back in it, you know, I thought, hell, you know, that was really, that was really grim for a few <laughs> years there. And I, I don't re- yeah. remember it sort of feeding like that at the time. Mm. But it was, you know, that, that was pretty difficult, pretty difficult. Yeah, but I, I, guess, I guess you can reflect on it and just concentrate on the joys as well. And how far you've come, I guess, is a positive to take away. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a. Well, not that this is the end, but it's you know, it's a. I'm in a happy place now. Yeah. I've been for a while, so you know. Um, it, yeah, no, no it, it was it was interesting to write about because I I knew what was coming. Mm. You know, that there's this horrible bit in the middle, but I I obviously know that ultimately that we, it all comes good and everything's yeah. better. You know, I've got a lovely family and the, you know, everyone's healthy and the, you know, the, the career's going better. And, you know, my songwriting was shit for a bit, but I think my songwriting's good again now. You know, I'm sort of proud of that again. So, you know, it, it, all came, it all came good. 